might want to look at Kevin Boss, tight end Kevin Boss. Has kind of been catching some passes. He scored last. week. He's got a few touchdowns in the season. He's, I don't think he's a bad play, especially with the inconsistency at the at the tight end level this year. Um, and, you know, it, he might be a good play. He might be a good play. I, I like that Baltimore defense is so, so stout, though. It's, it's hard for me to justify. If the Giants weren't so good, I would just tell you, don't start anyone. But the Giants are so good. I think they're going to win that game, and in doing so, they're going to have to score points which means somebody's going to have to post some sort of fantasy numbers. So, I don't know. Jacobs is a, is a good play, and hopefully Plaxico will be too for mine and some of your six. Um, next on the list, well, I need to hurry up. That took way too long for one game. Chicago at Green Bay. Uh, Kyle Wharton is a day-to-day kind of issue with his ankle. Again, uh, check-in Sunday morning, Saturday evening. Uh, see what's going on with that. If Kyle Wharton plays, he's a good start. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty good play. Green Bay has a pretty good secondary. Haven't allowed a lot of touchdowns through the air, especially at home. But uh, Kyle Wharton went in and healthy. Has been a good play this season. Also, Matt Forte, running back for Chicago, is a guy that you have out there every week, regardless of matchup or what's going on. Even though he's a rookie, he's earned that. Uh, and Green Bay just gave up a gigantic day to Adrian Peterson last week. So look for them to buckle down a little bit more on the run uh, and, and try to shut Forte down to, to kind of make some sort of a statement that people can't just come in and run the ball like crazy all over Green Bay. But uh, but still, Forte will have a decent day. He Remember, this kid catches balls, too. He does a pretty good job. I really like Forte. But, uh, you know, watch for Kyle Orton. If he comes back, some, if he comes back and plays... Then Greg Olson might be a decent star, tight end Greg Olson, possibly a Rasheed Davis, but uh, but always, always Matt Forte. And for Green Bay, uh, you know, this is a Chicago team that has a, a good defensive reputation, but their pass D is lacking. It's actually one of the worst pass Ds in the league. So this could be the week, uh, especially following a, a, an incredibly disappointing passing week, week 10, Green Bay at Minnesota. Aaron Rodgers had a just a, a lousy performance. Uh, Greg Jennings, who I'm a, an owner of, just totally disappointed. So this could be the week. They're at home. This is a, a rivalry game. Chicago's coming to town. Like I said, they have a, a weak pass defense. This could be the week. Aaron Rodgers tosses three or four touchdowns. And, um, and hopefully one of them's to Greg Jennings. Huh? Uh, but, I, you know, you have to deploy Greg Jennings if he's on your team. You have to start him every week. Uh, Don Driver could also be a decent start and, and a flex option if you're if you uh, suffered some sort of an injury. I don't know. It, at this late in the season, your, your lineup should be pretty well set, especially with no buys. But uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little hesitant about Ryan right now. He did put up over, I think, 75 yards and a touchdown against a an incredibly tough Minnesota run D last week, but he, I think he had 33 carries. He, he had a lot of carries. I, maybe not 33. He had a lot of carries, though, because Green Bay couldn't throw the ball. This week, they will be able to throw the ball. Not only will they be able to, but they, they will be throwing the ball. So I don't look for Ryan Grant to be as big of a factor. Uh, that Chicago de- defense is a little better against the rush than they are against the pass anyway. So... Next game, and I expect this to be somewhat of a shootout, which fares well for me. Hopefully it does for you, too. Denver at Atlanta. Um, and this is one of those games where you start everybody. You know you know those games where you start everyone involved that you can get your hands on. Uh, obviously start Jay Cutler, Brandon Marshall. Uh, Eddie Royal has just really come alive lately. Uh, which I, and, I, and I love this. He doesn't. He doesn't look like he belongs out there. He looks like he's about five foot ten, 130 pounds. I, I mean, but man, he, he's getting it done. And Jay Culler seems to be looking his way. Uh, Tony Scheffler. I, I think I read something today. Denver reactivated. I think Mike Bell. What? I. I think. I think. I. I think I read that. It, anyhow, don't get too excited about Denver running backs. Whoever they have out there. But that aerial attack is working. So Cutler, uh, Royal, Marshall, Scheffler, 
all those guys should have big games. On the other side, you know, Matt Ryan, Roddy White, uh, Michael Turner. Denver, Denver's rush D is terrible. Absolutely terrible. So expect Michael Turner to go off for another one of his big 140-yard days. And hopefully he gets a couple scores in too because I have him. And I have Eddie Royal. So hopefully these guys will light it up big. I need them to bad. Uh, Detroit at Carolina, next game. Carolina looking to bounce back from a piss-poor passing performance. Sorry, it, that's the only way I could think to describe it because I have Jake DeLome, and it was indeed 7 of 27. He did not complete one pass in the second half. Just one of the most putrid performances from a quarterback in the history. I just, oh, this is what I read today. This, he, this was, I can't even spit it out. I'm just so, bleh. I, I'm in such... Uh, bewildered at how awful DeLome was last week. No quarterback has been that bad and still won a game since like 1903. Something crazy. Like, DeLome was awful last week. 7 of 27. If you do your math, I think that's right, um, right around 25%. It's under 30%. It's terrible. It is terrible. This week, Carolina is at home. Detroit is coming to town. Uh, statement game. A bounce back statement game. Carolina will dismantle Detroit. But trust me, they're good enough to. I don't know what was happening last week. Apparently, if you drop D'Angelo Hall, uh, your secondary becomes just top notch. I guess that's what happened in Oakland anyway. Um, so I like Jake DeLone. Um, I like D'Angelo Williams again. He had a, a terrific week last week, 140 and a touchdown. Uh, Steve Smith, big, big day from Steve Smith, and possibly even a touchdown grab from Moose Muhammad, though I don't think that's worth rolling the dice on because if he doesn't score, he's not going to get you very many points. Um, Detroit, uh, listen, Culpepper's in town now. He's not good, all right? Uh, Kevin Smith is decent, not a bad play. Calvin Johnson... I'm not liking it. I'm just, I'm not liking this matchup for Detroit. They're too vulnerable, and Carolina is too angry about how lousy they played last week. Even though they got out of there with a win, they're, they're going to want to perform better and look a little better and definitely compete, complete more than 30% of their passes. So I don't think it's going to be a good day for Detroit. Carolina's got a solid defense also, and Calvin Johnson, if he doesn't get big, huge catches, it's not going to get you much. You need a quarterback, and you need another option on offense. Right now, he's all they have. So um, I've, I've said this before, now's the time. And if you look at Detroit's schedule, you'll agree. Now's the time if the trade deadline is still around in your league, which in my league, trade deadlines are uh, they're long gone, all right? Um, but if you can still make a trade and you're not in the keeper league, because Calvin Johnson is indeed a keeper, Trade Calvin Johnson. Get someone else. Trust me. Try to get Anquan Bolden. Try to get... Well, there's, guy, there's guys with, with nice matchups the rest of the way out. Look at Detroit's schedule. Look at the rest of Detroit's schedule, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Get rid of Calvin Johnson if you're not in the keeper league. Uh, Houston at Indy. Another game that could be a shootout. I, I don't think Matt Schaub's going to be back yet, which which means it's still going to be Sage Rosenfels. Hey, uh... You know Andre Johnson. You always have to plug in. I wouldn't. I wouldn't roll with Sage. If you look at a, if you look at Indy's pass D, it's actually one of the top ranked pass defenses in the league. But it's not because they shut the pass down. It's because they can't stop the run. People run like crazy on Indy. So Steve Slayton, after a, a just a lousy performance last week against Baltimore, where he only had four carries for nothing, and uh, I think he had a couple catches. Anyhow, very disappointing after what's been a, a really a magnificent start to the season for a rookie. Um, look for him to be a lot more involved this week. Reports are he was just really tired. He's had quite a workload up to this point in the season. Uh, you know, he's been basically the only running back they had healthy. If Ma Green's been hurt all year, he's basically been all they had in Houston to go with. And this week, like I said earlier, Indy can't stop the run. 